I finished this. It is 2 a.m. and my parents are sleeping and it is freaking cold. Um, it's pretty good if you don't zoom in. <gasps> oh no! So yeah, you ready to watch me get triggered? By Moana? <laughs> Let's just get into this. <laughs> I tried to break down her face shape with these red lines so that when I drew her face, it would actually look like Boana and not Spoderman or Linwell Miranda. I tried working on a pose, but then I failed. So instead of erasing it, I just put it to the side just in case, but I didn't use it. The beginning of a painting is so stressful. I'm just looking at a blank canvas and I'm like, I'm supposed to make a good thing on that? It's like an endless void. What am I supposed to put in there? I shortened the whole character because she was looking too tall and skinny. She needs more meat on her bones. Actually, this is part of the reason why I like her. She's not as much of an anorexic Barbie doll like the other Disney princesses are. And yeah, actually I haven't sketched digitally for a while, so I wanted to make it feel like pencil on paper. And to do that, I used gray instead of black with 40% uh, opacity and a soft eraser that copies the terrible accuracy that I have with my real eraser. I guess I tried to limit myself in this drawing a lot. I think that you actually, well, for me anyway, I get better results when I have some sort of restriction. It's like, it's, it's like a challenge. It's like the writer of a book is going, ha ha, how can I add challenges to my hero to make the story more interesting? And then I find a way to overcome those challenges, except in books, it's like the author is more like, how can I make my beloved character suffer for my entertainment? Are you not entertained? Because, uh, oh, ouch, I just hit my hand. The uh, characters in a book always, like, no, no story is good unless the characters are suffering. Like, there's no interesting books when the character's not going through some sort of hardship. So, I don't know, maybe if I, maybe if I'm, like, sadistic and, and, like, I don't know, put restrictions and make myself, you know, somehow, like, have these challenges or suffer or whatever, then maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll be more interesting. I don't know, that's weird. Anyway, um, by the way, here's a piece of advice with Moana. She doesn't have defined deltoids or shoulder muscles. I had to smooth the top part of her arm out. Um, and I really struggled with her hands for some reason. Maybe it's because I wanted them to be too perfect or something. Or maybe because I was used to sketching on paper too much. I don't know, but I have nightmares about the hands on this one. Drawing a character's face in a different angle is one of the hardest things in my opinion. It is so easy to get it wrong. And that's why I had to break her face down um, there on the side with the red lines to see how I was going to do it so that it would look like Moana and not Spoderman. This pose started out as just something random that looked aesthetically pleasing. But now that I look at it, the way that her hair is flowing in the same direction of her hand and how her leg even opens up on that side of her body, it's actually really nice because all of her weight is on one side of her body and the rest of it opens up. Like, like um, her leg and like that side of her are all straight and so that paddle on that side is like literally showing you how the line of weight goes while the other side of her body even like her hair and her skirt are flowing the other side in the wind so um i don't know not bad for a random pose i guess i had no idea what i was going to do for the background so i just threw up some colors and i mean literally threw up some colors <laughs> i threw it up yeah and i tried to make something happen at first um, in the layer underneath the line art, I put flat colors like a coloring book. Remember when you were taught to color outside the lines? Well, I don't always do that. You don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me. I'm a loner, daddy. A rebel. One thing I did was have the hue change with my brush so that it would look more natural and less digital and boring. Uh, in Photoshop, and I'm sure other programs, 
Um, you can set the brush so that the color varies slightly every time you put it down. And I did that to give some variance in the color, which is especially important to making the skin look less like a bad mannequin challenge. I had this really bad idea for adding blue light to her that I ended up deleting because I couldn't get it to look right. It looked like I was just erasing um, part of her because it's the same color as the background. Um, and then, after that, I started painting on a layer above the line art so that it would slowly, systematically cover all of the scribbles from my rough sketch. And then I put lighter, brighter colors on the ears to account for something called subsurface scattering, which is basically that glow that your ears get when a light is behind it. Oh, so cool. Or like your hands when you hold up a flashlight to your hands. So cool. I love sub 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 surf. Oh my gosh, subsurface scattering. Th here's the uh, here's where the craziness comes in, and you can you can watch me fail. I have never been super good at hands, but I usually figure it out fairly quickly. But with this one, no, it did not work like that. I got so frustrated. I mean, so frustrated with this part. It is unbelievable. I just couldn't get it to work, and I spent way too much time trying to figure it out. I should have just taken a picture of my hand and then uh, put it in Photoshop and traced over it or something, but I had to be a, an astronomically stubborn goat and just keep making terrible octopus tentacles of hands. I mean, seriously, after messing with her hands for so long, I started to question my own appendages, as if suddenly my fingers would start oozing away from the rest of my body in the most unnatural, double-jointed, salad fingers kind of a way. Is salad fingers ever, is salad fingers even a thing anymore? I don't know. I probably don't even want to know. Uh, yeah, so then I spent time painting over the line work, uh, more time doing that so she wouldn't have scribbles all over the place. Did I say that already? I just picked from the colors that I already laid down from before, which were picked from the picture of her that I have, um, on the side. Here, here's where the other tricky part came in. Feet. Ugh. Why are hands and feet so hard for people to draw? Feet are like stumpy hands with tiny stumpy fingers that are harder to draw than hands because they came from the fiery depths of hell. In case you can't tell, I don't like drawing hands and feet. Ugh, feet. But with that being said, I have a huge appreciation for them and admiration for the artists who have uh, mastered the sinful skill of drawing appendages. Because the thing that makes them so hard to draw also makes them so cool when you get it right. Hands and feet can be so expressive and aesthetically pleasing, and while it's so obvious to pose the body in cool ways to make your drawing look awesome, posing the hands and feet in nice ways can also bring your drawings to the next, next, next level. Believe it or not, to help with the feet, I looked at reference images of Tarzan, because I love how Glenn Keane and the other animators um, at Disney drew his feet with such character. I mean, in a lot of cases, Tarzan uses his feet like hands, so they had to draw Tarzan's feet with um, like a purpose other than those stubby things that go in your shoes. Because he would like pick up stuff with them. And uh, Eventually, I remembered that there is this little gap between your big toe and the rest of the little piggies. So when I put that in there, it helped me see the feet better in my head and finish the shape of the feet that I was happy with. One of the things that I love about Moana for some reason is her feet and ankles. She doesn't have the tiny, flimsy ankles like Disney is usually known for. It also reminds me of the art style of Chris Sanders, the dude responsible for Lilo and Stitch's art style, or Mel Doodles here on YouTube. If you haven't seen Mel Doodles yet, I would highly recommend um, checking out her stuff. She has a really cool style that you might enjoy. I'll put a link in the description for you too. And then I started working on the patterns and the details of her clothes, putting the holes in the triangle things, and then I made that Hawaiian flower thing off to the side to get the shape right before I put it on the skirt because um, it's kind of at an angle. I actually ended up putting it in the wrong place at first, but through the power of double checking, I, I, I fixed it. Yeah. 
Um, then I kept slowly hacking away at the patterns until, uh, oh, those were more time consuming to do, but it helped that I was lazy and decided to do it quickly and sloppily. I have an amazing attention span. I also thought that the, um, what's that thing on our chest called? I don't know, I'll just call it a rappy thing for now. I thought that the rappy thing on her chest was facing the wrong way. Um, and so I wanted to make it accurate and have it tilted the right direction as the, like her regular character design, but then I realized it looked better the way it was. So 10 points to Gryffindor for being creative and risky and doing stuff. Deal with it. For the shading, I used a light purple set to multiply um, to paint in the shadows. It's, it's a pretty basic way to do the shadows, um, very common in cell shading and like anime stuff. So if you want to shade a digital drawing of yours, try it out. Light purple set to multiply. It's like, uh, it's like going vegan. It solves all your problems. Solves all your problems. Solves all your problems. Solves all your problems. I did a step-by-step -step shading video that covers this process in depth, but uh, with a pencil instead. And I'll put a link in the description for that, for the, the shading. Um, or maybe one of those eye card things. What are they? What are they called? Those eye cards that they, those things that pop up in the top right corner. I think they're just called cards. Um, anyway, for the ambient lighting or soft highlights, I used a white. Uh, I used white. I was gonna say a white color, but white's not really color. And a soft brush on a layer set to soft light to bring up the highlights. It basically just goes on lightly to anything round or anything that sticks out. Um, it's kind of like that highlight on the sphere that beginners are supposed to draw. You know that sphere that every beginner drawing drawer person is supposed to do? Um, anyway, then I colored on another layer set to multiply, or something, I think it was multiply, to make her skin darker because she was looking too white when I added the highlights. And because I made her skin darker, I had to adjust the shadows too. Um, then I did what I hate myself for every day with basically every single one of my drawings. I deleted that highlights layer and I started over repainting them. Why? Did it look bad before? No. Was it necessary? No. But I took my time and when I redid it, the result was better, I guess? So while I'm lying awake at night, I'll try to convince myself it was worth it. Oh, when I redid it, the layer was set to overlay instead of soft light, so there was more color vibrance. Um, soft light um, layer mode is a little bit more muted. I love overlay mode. It's like when Ross Draws from YouTube does his color dodge thing. I do my overlay thing. What time is it? Overlay time. Oh yeah, Batman. Mashed potatoes and gravy. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Um, here's another way I use overlay mode. I use a really bright color and then with a soft brush I color one side of the drawing so it looks like there's a strong colorful light shining on her. Then I do it on the other side with another color. Sometimes it helps to use a complementary color. That's where those color theory lessons come in. Um, note to self, I'll have to make a video on color theory that's actually useful later. I've seen so many color theory videos, but um, they're always just, I don't know. Haven't found one that's totally awesome yet. But in this case, the orangey yellow is complementary to the light blue on the other side of her, um, which is what is used to make the scenes in movies look cool. I'm being cinematic, people. I knew I wanted some sort of cool light effect, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just kind of winged this drawing, so I just messed around with a bunch of blending modes and color dodge and stuff like that until I figured it out. I think I actually got rid of that orange at the end. I don't remember. If I did, uh, my second guessing skills are at an all new level. My self-doubt has turned Super Saiyan 3. Story of my life. Self-doubt has turned Super Saiyan 3. Then I did a little bit of rim lighting. If you don't know what rim lighting is, it's basically the savior of our universe. It is where you put a really light color, in this case, pure white, where the light catches and wraps around the figure. It doesn't go everywhere though, uh, only where the light is most intense on the edges of stuff. 
so I put it on the edges where I did that blue overlay stuff. Again, it's explained in super detail in my shading video done in pencil, so if you want a step-by-step -step in graphite form, the link is in the description. After that, I went over it again with um, blue light, but this time the layer was set to vivid light because it's more vivid than overlay. Oh, that's why they call it vivid light. Oh my god, I feel so stupid. <laughs> it's like overlay mode, but more vivid, and it's called vivid light. Wow, so dumb. Then I... <sighs> I'm gonna put I'm gonna put something in the title like like how to draw Moana like an idiot or something. Then I put flowers in the wrong place of her skirt again, being an idiot. <laughs> then I proceeded to literally scribble in the details of her other clothes. I then I used the lasso tool to cut out the outline of her so that the scribbles wouldn't uh, be all over the place, poking out of her arms and legs. In other words, I guess I shaved her arms and legs. Uh, you know what happens to me all the time? All the time. I accidentally double click when I'm using the lasso tool and it completely messes up the section that I was working on. It's like I spend two and a half minutes concentrating hard and getting it right and then BAM! Back to square one. Not that two, two and a half minutes is a big deal, but when those minutes are spent concentrating and if you do it like five times, it gets frustrating. Man, it sounds like I'm, it's, it sounds like this painting just made me angry. Like I'm getting triggered, like first world problems of an angry white boy, right? That's gonna be, the, <laughs> that's gonna be the name of my memoir. First world problems of an angry white boy by Andrew Bush. Man, how captivating would that book be? It would just be filled with uh, exciting misadventures of internet lag, dank memes, and out of context flatulation, or experiencing internet lag while viewing dank memes about flatulation. After I got the outline squared away, I smoothed out all the rough colors that I had put down earlier, specifically mostly in the face because I wanted the focal point and, uh, like I wanted that to be the focal point and people tend to look at the face of a character mostly um, at least first when they look at a character and here's okay. Here's a good rule um, If you're going to spend time perfecting and polishing any one part of the body in your drawing or painting Make it the face because it's easier for people to, to tell if a face is derped up than a foot or some other part of the body So yeah, I tried to make the face a little nicer than the rest of the drawing. Oh, oh Here's where it gets cool in my opinion I made a bunch of fish in the background like Moana was standing in an aquarium or in front of a wall of water or something. I basically scribbled in some color um, in sort of the shape of a fish, sort of, and then I lowered the opacity so that it would be see-through and the, uh, the blue would show through that bright orange color. Then I found this cool brush. I don't remember if I made it or if it's a default Photoshop brush, but when it's, when it's white like this, it kind of looks like the sun is poking through the surface from underneath the water. And I went with it because it kind of looks cool, and also, who cares? It looks good enough for me, so I went with it. The rest of, uh, the rest of it is just filled with a bunch of overlapping overlay colors with bright colors and pretending like I know what I'm doing with color balance. I, I don't. Um, but in the end, the background is just a bunch of colors close to light blue on the color wheel. Um, and I just wanted something that would complement the warm colors of her clothes and her skin And I think the uh, the color of that water um, Worked really nicely, you know if you think about it Moana is pretty much all browns Even that reddish those those reddish orange parts of her are basically very saturated bright browns like Like if you took all of the color out of a out of an orange it would turn brown so um and like her hair and her skin and her clothes are all variations of brown and tan and beige. So I think it's smart of the character designers to do that because it goes very well with the blue of the ocean in Hawaii, um, where Moana takes place. And, and, and if you think about it, her if her clothes were blue or something, she wouldn't really stand out in the movie. 
because the blue ocean is seen a lot. So she had to have a color palette that looked good against it. But then that makes me think about Frozen. Elsa was blue and white, but then everything else was blue and white. I don't know. Man, I, pfft, who, what, pfft, what do I know? <sighs> anyway, there you go. Here's the Moana girl, my favorite character design so far ever. Yes, I really mean that. Seriously, it is my favorite character design right now. <laughs>